Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel. I'm now going to be going through the paper, the January 2024 Mechanics M1 paper from Edexcel. Um, um, this is the, um, the International A-Level paper, WME0101. And this um, paper, as I do always, I'm going to go through each question in a separate video such that I can um, save it in the playlist, one with the uh, the other questions from this paper, another with the other questions from the topic that that particular question is from. And I'm going to not just be a talking mark scheme, as I keep mentioning, I'm going to go through each question in the kind of detail that I feel is necessary, keeping in mind the type of questions that my students ask me. This is a teaching tool for me to teach my students primarily. So I might have a question in my head that a student has asked me about. And I want to make a certain kind of uh, principle clear to them. So I will go into detail in order to achieve to achieve that objective. That is, you know, um, how I go about using these videos as a teaching tool for myself. So that's what I'm going to be doing in these videos. So if you're just here to look at the mark scheme, then it might not be for you. So please just, you know, um, try and find something else then which is more suitable for yourself. I'm going to go through some detail in my explanations because I have certain questions in my mind that students have asked me. So now, question number one. Here we have a small smooth ring threaded onto a light inextensible string. So we have a smooth ring threaded, in bold, onto a light inextensible string. Okay, so the ring is smooth, meaning there's no friction in the, in the, in the ring. All right, and the string is one string. There's not two separate sections, like two separate strings. It's one string. And because the ring is smooth, the tension on both sides of the ring will be the same. So the tension acting on the ring from the rope on, or the string on this side will be the same as on that side. And it's not threaded onto like a rigid rod or wire, something that's, uh, you know, uh, rigid. It's threaded onto a string, which is not rigid. So there's no reaction force. If it was threaded onto like a, a rod, okay, and there was a tension pulling in a certain direction, then there will be a reaction force also there. But there's no reaction force here because it's a string. It's threaded onto a string, not a rigid body. Okay, so you're going to have the tension here and the tension here will both be the same. That's one thing. So that's when, it's, when we say smooth ring, okay, and the the string is threaded it's the same piece of string and the tension on both sides of the ring will be say, the same because the ring is smooth and the the string is light so the tension all the way through each part of the string will be the same so the tension at this point will be the same as that point the same as that point because we're not considering any weight in the string so this part of the string is not holding the weight of what's above it because there's no weight above it because we're considering it as light inextensible means that it cannot be stretched and therefore any um, when it's taught there's any any particle which is attached to it uh, if it's accelerating for example all particles attached to it will have the same acceleration in this case that doesn't apply because it's, it's, it's the static so there's no acceleration one end of the string is attached to a fixed point a on the horizontal ceiling and the other end of the string is attached to a fixed point b on that ceiling so that's horizontal that's a and that's b a horizontal force of magnitude two newtons acts on the ring so that the ring rests in equilibrium at a point C, which is vertically below B, with the string taut. So the string has got tension in it. The line of action of the horizontal force and the string both lie in the same vertical plane. Okay, it's not like, um, you know, if you look at it from, you know, one, one string is not going in that way, and the other one is not going in that way if we're looking at it verti like three-dimensionally. They're ba basically in line with each other in the same plane. Okay, they're not like... Uh, angles to each other in different planes okay so the angle that the string makes with the ceiling at a is theta where tan theta is three quarters the tension in the string is t newtons the mass of the ring is m kilograms find the value of t and m so i'm gonna put the information here so i don't have to keep scrolling up and down when i'm looking at the diagram and uh, annotating on it so here i'm gonna have the forces acting you're gonna have the mass of the or the weight of the ring should be vertically down okay which is going to be m capital mg 
And we're going to have to find what mg, m is. We've got the tension in the strings, which is the same on both sides. So this tension is the same as this tension. Let me just draw that a bit better. So I'll do it with the uh, these arrows. So you've got the tension here and the tension here. They're both equal. Those are the forces acting on the ring. You've got your two Newton's force that way. Okay, and what else do we have? That's it, basically. All right, we know that tan theta is equal to three quarters. We know that tan of theta equals three quarters, which means that sine theta is going to be opposite of a hypotenuse, three fifths, and cosine theta is going to be adjacent of a hypotenuse, which is four fifths. Now, how, some people are going to say, how did you know that? So I'm going to show you. All right, but basically here, if you think of an, a, a right angle triangle, if you think of a right angle triangle, okay, let's draw a random right angle triangle, um, and we have the angle here as 90 degrees, of course, is right angled. Okay, supposing this was theta, and this was opposite, and this was adjacent. If tan theta equals three quarters, that would be opposite and adjacent. That means this side must be 5, because 3 squared plus 4 squared gives us 9 plus 16. 25 squared of 25 is 5. 3, 4, 5 triangle. So that means the sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, and the cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, 4 over 5. So I know that this is the opposite side, tangent, the numerator is opposite, and the denominator is the adjacent. And I know that the hypotenuse is going to be 5, because 3, 4, 5 triangle. So just by looking at this, I can say that's opposite. Hypotenuse 5, so 3 fifths for sine. That's adjacent. 5 is the hypotenuse, so 4 fifths for cosine. That's how I can tell straight away, just by looking at those. And if you just wrote those down, that's perfectly fine. What you shouldn't do is find the angle, and then say sine of the angle. and f Keep it in terms of these fractions. If they gave you a value of the tangent, or the sine, or the cosine of an angle, that makes life a lot easier for you. Things cancel out, and sometimes you have to give things in exact values, and um, you won't be able to so easily if you uh, write the angle as a decimal. Okay, so now these are the forces acting on the particle here. Now this is a right angle. This is alpha, theta, sorry. Now what I'm going to do so I can recognize the angles easily, I'm going to draw a line that's like along this line, like this. I'm also going to draw a line along here, okay, so that I can recognize some angles. So I know that this angle here is theta, okay, I know this angle here is also theta right because this is like horizontal horizontal z shape vertically opposite or corresponding even so i know these two angles are theta right so now i can try to resolve my forces in this case i think it's best to resolve the forces vertically and horizontally so vertically we're going to have t plus and this will be t times let's resolve this force vertically so i'm going to change the color um Keep it like this, change the color. All right, so I want to resolve this force vertically. Okay, so this force resolve vertically. We're going away from the angle that I've marked theta. We're going to go in this direction, we're going away from the angle, right? So if you're going away from the angle, then that's going to be T sine theta. It's like we're looking at the opposite side. So that's going to be T times sine theta. So we've got the tension from this string, which is straight up, so it's T, but then we've got the, the, the um, component of this tension in the vertical direction, which is T sine theta, and that's equal to mg, because it's an equilibrium, the upward forces and downward forces are equal. Okay, and if we resolve horizontally, okay, then we've got um, our two Newtons acting to the right, and that's equal to the component of this force in the other direction. So we've got the component of the tension in the horizontal direction. Oops, what am I doing? I need this arrow. Start from there. So we're going to resolve this force horizontally. And you can see that if I'm going to go in this direction, I have to go into the angle. Go into the angle. It's like I'm finding the adjacent side. So this is going to be... Let me, write, let me write this T up here. This is going to be T times cosine of theta. T times cosine of theta. So 2 newtons equals T cosine theta. So I don't need to put the newtons, just 2. 
2 equals t cosine theta. So um, we can see here from this that, um, you know, the t, this t and this mg do not have any component in the horizontal direction because they are perpendicular to them. Okay, so that is the, um, yeah, th those are the two equations we can form. And from this, we should be able to find um, the value of t and the value of m. Now, I know sine theta is three-fifths. So let me just take this first equation and I can write this as um, t plus three-fifths t equals mg. Okay, so that's, that's five, that's eight over five, t equals mg so i can say t is equal to 5 mg over 8 okay so i know that's what t is equal to okay and we've got to find the value of t and the value of m uh, we can also take that t value and put it into here okay and that will give us what m is right that will give us what m is because we don't know what t or m is we can replace the t with 5 mg in fact, I can find what t is from here. t is equal to 2 over cosine theta. All right? Or I can even make it even easier than that. In fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to scrap this because I think it's much easier to just find what t is first. Okay? So I know that cosine theta is 4 fifths. So 2 equals 4 over 5 t. Cosine theta is 4 fifths. So t is going to be 5 times 2 divided by 4. 5 times 2 divided by 4 which is going to be 10 over 4, which is 2.5 newtons. So I know what T is, and then I can use this. I, this is 2.5 plus 2.5 times sine theta, which is times 3 fifths, is equal to mg. Okay, so that's going to be uh, 2.5 divided by 5. Is, there's going to be a 2 here. That would be like a 2.5 2 over 5 is, is a half. So that's going, to be, that's going to be 5 over 2 plus 3 over 2 equals mg. Okay, that's going to be 8 over 2, which is 4 equals mg. So m is equal to 4 over g. So m is equal to 4 over 9.8. Okay, because it's at Excel, we use 9.8. So you have 4 divided by 9.8. And that gives us an answer, which is 20 over 49, which is 0 0.408 to 3SF. 0 0.408. Okay, and that's going to be... Um, kilograms okay that's kilograms that's m okay and that's the answer so if t equals 2.5 and m equals 0 0.408 kilograms and we have solved question number one okay so a few very important points we had to consider about the string about the ring about the ring being smooth about the string and the ring not having any reaction force between them because the string is not rigid uh, some very important points that we need to know and so that concludes this question um, other questions from this particular paper will be found in the playlist it will appear at the top of the screen over here at the end of the video other questions dealing with statics in m1 will be found in the playlist over here and in particular i have a special playlist just for rings which will be in this area over here you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link thank you for watching and see you soon